In this video, we'll break down what blending is, we'll take a look at various blend modes and how blending works within Video Sync, what role the properties device has when it comes to blend modes, and how wrap modes can be used to fill areas that would otherwise be transparent. In this live set, we have two videos playing on two separate tracks. When tracks are mixed together into the master output, or when chains are mixed together to form the output of a rack, they can be mixed in several ways. This mixing is determined by the chosen blend mode. Before we can choose a specific blend mode for a track, we first have to add a properties device to it. The properties device is a bit different from regular effects, as only one instance can exist on a track or in a chain. When there are two or more properties devices on one track, only the leftmost device will be used. The other devices will display a warning. The device also offers a number of other features that are useful when it comes to routing, but we'll discuss those parameters in another video. At the top of the device, we can select a blend mode. The default blend mode is additive, which is also the only blend mode that is supported when using Video Sync Intro. While using the additive blend mode, the order in which we place the tracks does not matter, since all pixel values are simply added together. Generally, this results in a brighter image, which we can compensate for by using the volume faders. But for other blend modes like alpha or subtract, the results can look very different depending on the order of the tracks in your live set. Before we take a look at some of those other blend modes, let's break down what's actually happening here using the additive blend mode as an example. Every pixel of a video has three color values or channels referred to as RGB. RGB meaning red, green, and blue. Some videos may have RGB A values where A stands for alpha. Alpha in this case controls the level of transparency of a pixel. Typically, red, green, blue, and alpha are specified with values between 0 and 255. With macOS's digital color meter application, and by using our cursor, we can measure RGB values of one or more pixels. We can see that the color white translates to equal values for red, green, and blue, all being 255. If we hover over a darker part of the screen, we'll see different values. As mentioned, 255 is the maximum for all color channels, so if we add together the darker parts with white, the result will still be white. There's one more caveat to explain here, which is that within Video Sync and other applications, all values are eventually converted to values between the range of 0 to 1. This can be easily done by dividing all numbers by 255. This will make sense especially for some of the blend modes we will discuss later in this video. Tracks in the session view are blended in left to right order, so the leftmost track is overlaid with the track on its right side using the overlaying tracks blend mode. The result is overlaid with the following track, and so on. The same applies to the arrangement view, but in top to bottom order. If we choose the alpha blend mode for the track on the right, its textures will be drawn on top of the track to the left. This is because the video files used in this live set don't actually have an alpha channel, so the value for the alpha channel defaults to 255, and is in other words, completely opaque. If we add a transform device and adjust the position, we can see that the video of track 1 is indeed still behind the video of track 2. If we switch the tracks around, we will have to set the blend mode to alpha for this track as well, to ensure again that it is drawn on top of the track to its left. If the video itself on track 2 would have had an alpha channel, and some pixels of this video would have had an alpha value lower than 255, we would be able to see the video of track 1 through those pixels. To illustrate this, let's use this video and create some transparent parts within this layer ourselves. If we use the transform device to decrease the size of the video in this layer, we are essentially creating pixels around the video with an alpha value of 0. The wrap mode then determines how that area of the screen is filled up. The default is none, which is why we currently see the video of track 1 in the background. Wrap duplicates the image to fill the screen. Mirror does the same, but also mirrors it. And with clamp, the pixels on the edges of the video are stretched to the edges of the screen. By transitioning to wrap mode B, which is still set to none, we can create transparency in all the pixels that are outside of the original textures area. 
Group tracks work as expected. As we can see here, first the tracks within the group are blended, in this case by using the additive blend mode, and then the output of the group track will be blended with other tracks that are on the same level. In this case, we are again using the alpha blend mode for the group, which causes the video from the group to be drawn on top of the video on track 1. As mentioned before, the blend order in the arrangement view is from top to bottom. The blend mode for the second track is set to alpha, so only when we mute the track or lower the volume slider, track 1 comes into view. In rack chains, the blend order is also from top to bottom. So if we would set the blend mode for every chain to alpha, then the bottom chain is the top layer, as each chain is overlaid with the chain below it. Let's use a wavy device to create some fully transparent pixels on this layer. By distorting the image, we are creating some new areas for which we can decide how wavy should fill them. This is again controlled with the wrap mode. The default wrap mode for wavy is clamp, but if we transition to wrap mode B, which is still set to none, gaps will appear in the distortions. To summarize, the gaps in the distortions created by Wavy introduce pixels with alpha values set to zero. Because we're using the alpha blend mode, we can see the original video in the background while the distortions of the bottom chain are drawn on top of the top chain. Now let's look at a few other blend modes. Instead of drawing the distorted version on top of the layer under it, let's literally blend them together by using the subtract blend mode. Subtract, as the name implies, subtracts the RGB values of the top layer from the RGB values of the layer below it. Multiply, again as the name implies, multiplies the RGB values from 0 to 1 of each pixel in the top layer with the values for the corresponding pixels from the layer under it. There are many articles and other videos online to learn more about the various blend modes, and we encourage you to check them all out, and then to try them out with VideoSync.